What's up, brother? Nothing. All right, cool. That's cool. Right? That's like real cool. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 Ooh, there's uh, not a whole lot going on right now. Not really. terrible you want to talk about a lot of the uh, trailers and stuff that you dropped for us oh, I did drop a bunch didn't I yeah I can remember that uh, we got the new Axel Foley uh, Beverly Hills Cop Beverly Hills Cop Axel F which is a very I bizarre mean, name but it was a I honestly haven't watched it yet dope trailer. ass trailer what was the trailer I watched it, oddly enough, none of the trailers that you, that you posted for us, I watched. But oh. I watched uh, at least one of them on, on YouTube ad. Was it Merry Little Batman? Because you thumbed up that one. Oh, no. That one I did watch. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that one I did watch while I was uh, uh, on my phone. And I saw. Oh, If. If was the one that uh it came up on a youtube trailer and i was like okay like i don't know what this is uh because i uh you had posted the trailer the teaser trailer and i had seen a uh poster yeah of it uh and it the poster is literally just looks like a purple hand coming out of a window or like opening up a window and it's like what the f is this uh Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, the poster, yeah. And uh, it finally came up on uh, on uh, YouTube commercials, and I was like, "Oh, I'll watch this." I didn't know it had uh, Ryan Reynolds in it, and it's basically Foster's home for imaginary people. Uh, essentially, yeah, but like a little bit of Drop Dead Fred. With yeah, it, I didn't even think about that until. I, I mean, Honestly, I haven't really thought about that movie until you said something about it. Oh, it's like drop, drop dead thread, uh, or drop dead Fred. And I was like, oh my god, I remember that movie I should from way movie. back in the day. The movie is fantastic. The movie is fantastic. But yeah, it looks interesting. Yeah, there's a. Uh, I didn't send it, but there's a. Uh, they released a behind the scenes thing for it, I'm talking about because it's written and directed by John Krasinski. Yes, uh, of of office fame and Jack Ryan popularity, um, amongst other things, I guess. Yeah, uh, but I guess it's a project he's been working on for like seven years. Damn. Um, and uh, I don't even know when they started production on it or what what didn't go that far. But they he talked about it and and, and he just went over that the idea and and the, and the, you know the obviously the outstanding cast that he has involved in it which is way bigger than what I mean if you watch the trailer at the end they show you everybody uh, that's that's working on it and it's a pretty long list of who's who um, the voice cast because of all the uh, ifs or imaginary friends uh, which is an extremely clever way of doing it um, this is massive obviously it's a headline by Steve Carell uh, a very close friend and, and colleague of John Krasinski, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, like I said, Jim from the office. Um, so that, that was pretty rad. I was like, oh, okay. Um, but it has a ton of people in it and there's just, uh, if you watch this yeah. behind the scenes video they did, um, you can kind of see the, the joy that you, I mean, obviously they didn't put the misery photos and stuff in there, but uh, you can see how much fun a lot of people were having on set with everything. So this really does have a lot of people in it. I mean, obviously it has Ryan Reynolds in it, uh, but Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Sam Rockwell, uh, John Krasinski is listed as being in it. Steve Carell, Vince Vaughn, Aquafina, uh, 
Richard Jenkins. That's a big uh, one. Christopher Maloney, Maya Rudolph. Uh, b- 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 I'm looking for other names that I recognize. Bobby Monahan. Monahan, yeah. Uh, to name a few, it's like, damn. There's one other wig when you're you're missing that I was shocked because I could have swore he was dead. I'm going through the full list now because obviously on the main page they always show everybody. Are you, uh, are you on IMDb? Oh, Louis Gossett Jr.? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah he plays the, the bear uh, that you see in the trailer that's with him. Yeah, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. I, Bro, I could have swore he was he was dead. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? There you are. What was his last project? Iron Eagle 4. Jeez. Uh, he's actually got 12 upcoming projects. He's active as fuck, man. If on Smoother Dirt, forget to remember Elephants in the Room, Everbrook, Unplugged, Scorched Earth, Sin, Redemption, Capture the Flag, Awaken the Reaper, Soul to Keep. Uh, before that, though, I mean, he's been doing something called Kingdom Business. It's a TV series. Yeah, like I said, I color purple from this past from this year as well. I, he's been prolific. Just nothing that I've watched. Yeah, that's what I mean. I was like, I, I, I was shocked. The last thing that I've watched of his was Watchmen, the TV, the miniseries. Oh, he was in that. Yeah. Oh, should have forgot. Oh, such a good but show. He's been prolific ever since then. Just nothing I, I know about. Can Land, The Reason, Not to Forget, Three Months, Outlaw, Johnny Black. The color purple from this past year, Kingdom Business for the past two years or past one year, 2022-2023. So he's been prolific. Just yeah. All right. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, right. what the hell? But yeah, that's a pretty pretty substantial cast for for the movie. Yeah. I like it a lot. It looks funny. I enjoy it. I'd probably enjoy it. I, I enjoy Foster's Home for Imaginary People, so similar idea. And I'd like Drop Dead Threat. Drop Drop Dead Fred. Jesus Christ, it's a good one. That movie I might have to go watch. It's been it's been ages since I watched that movie. It's probably been like two days since you watched that movie. It's been a while, actually. I don't, I don't even I don't even know like where to like I could probably find my DVD of it somewhere. If I looked hard enough, I guess I could probably find my VHS of it, too. Gross. Yeah. I love that movie. You don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, I actually don't even own that movie. I'd have to find it on a streaming server somewhere. That's what I mean. Good Omens was renewed for a third season. Second season hasn't even aired yet. That's awesome. Wait, wait, isn't the second season out? Is it? I think so. Amazon does a really terrible job of promoting almost everything. But like they're worse than Am- than uh, fucking uh, Netflix sometimes. Uh, yeah, July twenty eighth. Yeah. Wait, I thought so. So it's been out. Yeah, like been out and like done. Episodes are all out. Okay, well, I guess I'm too far behind. <laughs> all right, Mike. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff on Amazon. I when I went to go f- find Reacher the other day. Um, I realized we're we're out. Um, I didn't know season. It, I didn't know Good Omens had released or been uh, granted a third season. It said third and final in the article. I just skipped over. Um, but that's beyond the point. I realized that I haven't watched uh, Carnival Row season two. That's out. I'm most of the way through that, but yeah, I need to pick back up and finish it. Um, obviously, like uh, Jack Ryan. Season four came out and was out before I watched it. Um, I don't remember how far I was into that. The fourth season's really, really, really good, but also it's like sh- too short. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if it's one of those shows that I don't know if I started season four and didn't finish it, or if I finished season like I did the same thing with. Um, there was something on net. Oh, the The Witcher on Netflix. Didn't realize I I actually had finished it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Your 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 mind blocked out the negativity. Pretty much. I'll 
also that just the way it ended like is like to be continued with someone else with someone else yeah <laughs> that's the worst part yeah that is the worst part actually the worst part about all of that is I ran across an article where it says uh, uh, and I'm probably going to butcher his name uh, Andre Sapkowski, Sapkowski yeah uh, says that he really liked uh, Henry Calville's portrayal of Geralt to the point of where when he thinks of the character, he thinks of of Henry Calville. That's because Henry dives into shit and, like, literally is obsessed with it. Uh-huh. Like, it's just... It's obnoxious because he's so good, and then the projects falter because people are stupid I guess or greedy or, or dumb or whatever um, but yeah it's a I mean I don't know it's it's wild because like he does such a good job of these characters that um, that he loves so much um, that he just you know he, he embodies them and does so, such a good job but then you know things happen and you're like oh cool awesome never gonna see this again at the article right now and uh, I forgot about this the the last one of the last paragraphs of the article is uh, uh, as, as for Sapkowski this is from Games Radar Plus sure. uh, the Polish author has a new Witcher novel coming out next year he's written six volumes in the series so far but recently joked that Netflix ex- ignores his ideas uh, he's quoted as saying maybe I gave them some ideas but they never listened to me they never listen to me but it's normal who's this it's the writer Eh, it's nobody. <laughs> yep, sounds about Jesus right. Jesus Christ. Good, good job, Netflix. God. It's the, it's the problem with all studios, though. Right. They they all just, they, they latch on to something popular and they don't actually, like, go forward with what made it popular. Mm-hmm. We have that. They always want to put their own spin on it, which in some cases I would say is fine if you are just changing things a little bit here and there to make it easier for you to to bring that property to life. You know, but uh, when you're fundamentally changing the story and everything that everybody likes about it, it might as well just be a totally different project. Hey, hey everybody, I know you love apple pie, so we're going to make the world's best apple pie, but we're going to substitute for pears. Exactly. It's like, but it's not apple pie then, it's pear pie. No, but it's apple pie. But y- Yes, but you changed the fundamental thing of it. Yeah, but we're saying it's apple pie, so it's apple pie. So I'm not going to like it. No, you will, because it's apple pie. You love apple pie, you said that already. Yes, I do, I love apple pie, but it's See? not apple pie. Yeah, exactly. No, this but is... no, listen, Joe, it is apple pie, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I gotcha. It's apple pie. Yeah, that's yeah. That is essentially the thing. It's dumb. Yep. Anyway, how was the uh, how was uh, the Beverly Hills Cop trailer? Then I haven't watched that one yet. It's really good. Uh, you don't really they don't really explain too much uh, in the in the it's a teaser. Um, they basically just hit the the fact that like everybody who's currently alive is returning. Uh, to for 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 their roles. Um, so, uh, the biggest thing is, uh, I mean, obviously, Axel Foley. Um, he, he is coming back. Uh, obviously, uh, Eddie Murphy will be returning, but his former two partners, whose one name I can't remember, uh, Judd Reinhold, and then the other one. Yeah, I don't remember the name either. Hold on. Uh, nope. That's that's not how you spell that. Uh-huh. Oh, I forgot that's the name of the song, too. Yeah, Cox Left. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, it is funny when that plays in it, though, because it's like, uh, it sounds like it's a, um, obviously they redid it, right? They, like, remastered or whatever, but it's like, you start, it starts it, I was like, is this a Star Wars, like, version and then it hits you're like oh it's so good though it is oh um, my god there's there's a, quite a few people in this too why did that not that's okay so it's funny yeah it mentions Judge Reinhold but I don't actually see the other guy listed 
Uh, where's Taggart at? Um, oh, there you go. John, John, uh, John, John Ashton. Ashton. Yeah. As Taggart. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Kevin Bacon's in it. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's in it. Paul Reiser. Bronson, uh, Bronson uh, Pinoch. Pincho. Pincho uh, as Serge. Serge. Yeah, it's funny, too, because like, when you see him in the, tra- in the trailer, I was like, oh, my God, that's him. Mm-hmm. Did he age? On it, like I like lo- looking at all these people here. I, I, you know, Eddie Murphy doesn't look like he's aged, you know, at all. Joseph Gordon Levitt, this must be an old picture of him because uh, he still looks boyish. Uh, Kevin Bacon is, is cloaked in darkness, so you can't really see much of him. But yeah, this I- image of uh, Bronson Pignot uh, is like hasn't aged at all. Yeah, it's it's fucking wild, dude. Yeah, so um. They they kind of do like a, a a greatest hits thing. Basically, the show starts with uh, f- the jacket, uh, him putting him with the jacket on, and everything, and then basically it's him and Paul Reiser talking, and he says, you know, don't get in trouble, right. whatever. Paul Reiser was in the other movies, but yeah, he, he's his he partner. Played like uh, the sergeant or or his friend partner back in Detroit. Yeah, it's his it's his partner in Detroit. Yeah, yeah, he, he covers okay, for that, him. This okay, it's flooding back to me now. Yeah, so then Judge Reinhold and uh, John Ashton play his partners that in L.A. in L.A. Um, in Beverly Hills, technically. Um, oh, yes, Beverly Hills. Sorry, yes, Beverly yeah. Hills cop. Yeah, um, reluctant in the first movie, and then full on partners in the in the second uh, movie for sure. And then um, Kevin Bacon obviously is a new new to the the franchise. So does Joseph Gordon Levitt. And then uh, the actress uh, Taylor Page, uh, who plays uh, his estranged daughter, um, are also new to the franchise. Um, but yeah, the fact that they got and there could be other ones that come back. I just don't know. Uh, you know, obviously we've only seen a snippet of what's going on, but the whole, the whole premise is a friend is is embroiled in a uh, an a uh, there's a death of an old friend. And then there's corruption in the police department uh, that has to do with his his daughter who works for the Beverly Hills Police Department um, and her ex-boyfriend who is a cop played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt uh, who becomes Axel's new partner in the new movie. I want his middle name to be Robin. <sighs> I hate you so much. Um, <laughs> He's playing a cop. <laughs> uh, it's funny too because uh, he, um, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt tweeted about it um, and he's uh, I've played a cop in Gotham, in no, and uh, Nola, and one other, and something else. And he's like, now I'm Beverly Hills, and I was like, oh hell yeah, dog. Mm-hmm. Um, Rosewood and Taggart. Uh, uh, I guess he was. Oh, I guess John Ashton was in the third one, wasn't he? But he was retired at that point. Um, yeah, so like, the, there's a pretty, uh, the only like substantial scenes in it are between Joseph Gordon Levitt or in the trailer are just between Joseph Gordon Levitt and, and, uh, Eddie, and then a quick one with, uh, Rosewood and Taggart. And then obviously Axel, uh, and he does a classic thing where he pops up in their back seat. Nice. Yeah. And then there's a, there's a, there's a scene with Kevin Bacon, um, where he seems menacey. And seems very uh, uh, bad guy y. Oh, that's cool. I like a, a bad guy, Kevin Bacon. Yeah, so I mean, it's it, it's funny too because like I was when I was watching it, it, I watched it like twice or three times in a row just so I could like try to pick up on stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it reminded me of how the captain was with like kind of was like upset with Foley in the first one, then obviously mm-hmm. became friends with him, and then. You know, obviously the events of the second one uh, were a little different. So I was like, "Are they? Are they? Are they trying to make me think this and like make him think he's a bad guy, and he's actually just you know doing his job, doing his job?" Uh, yeah. But yeah, um, and it's funny too because uh, Axel is only a lieutenant. I say only a lieutenant. Uh, but a lieutenant, like, literally 35 years later. Mm-hmm. He's not, like, retired or he's not a captain or anything like that, probably because he's a little bit fucking of a cowboy. 
Uh, but I was, it was just funny. But yeah, it says, after the death of an old friend, Detroit Police uh, Department Lieutenant Axel Foley returns to Beverly Hills to investigate corruption within the police, the Beverly Hills Police Department with his estranged daughter and her ex-boyfriend. That's the, 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 the premise of the movie. Interesting. Yeah. It almost sounds like the premise of the second movie, too. Uh, sort of, yeah. That was more. That was less corruption in the police department, and more just the fact that like they were not really catching on to all the things that were happening. Well, no, it wasn't the wasn't one of the movies. Uh, he's or was it the first one. He's investigating the death of a friend. Uh, second one's the death of a friend. That's what I was saying with okay, the captain. Okay, so it was second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the second one, his friend wasn't dead. The captain was shot, and he was in intensive care. In the second one, um, gotcha. but yes, yeah. Okay. Um. So I don't know if you know this or not, uh, because it's uh, weird trivia. Uh, do you know who was originally intended to play Axel Foley? In the... I don't think I know that. No. Sylvester Stallone. I'm going to say Burt Reynolds. Sylvester Stallone. He... Oh, Sylvester Stallone? Yep. Sly? Yep. That would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um... Would it still be a comedy at that point? I mean... I, I mean, he did comedy action movies, but like yeah, it's just weird type of comedy. Yeah, it's just weird because like, like obviously Tango and Cash is great because of comedy, but it's like his he's it's more of a mom, my mom will shoot. Yeah, in in Tango and Cash is he's it's more of a, a, a wry humor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where in this is like more of like you know I don't want to say slapstick, but you know. Outright. But it's more outright humor, and, yeah. ha- and most of that comes from Eddie Murphy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it was pretty, pretty, pretty hilarious. Um, but yeah, there's a um, there's a lot of like weird stuff. Like Mickey Rourke was offered the role, um, and he and was another really weird. It'd be a different tonal movie. Yeah, and I we we all look at the Beverly Hills Cop movies as like comedies, but they're really more than just that. They are action, they're drama. Uh, there's obviously comedy in it. Uh, it's Tim. If you ask me, one of Eddie Murphy's best characters and best movies that he's done, definitely um, agree. because it's definitely all around. Um, he does a very good job um, in it all together. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of weird things that happened with Beverly Hills and how it evolved over the years. I read uh, about it. I'm pulling it up right now. Um, so, like, not to get on a weird tangent from what we're talking about, but we'll go to this real quick. So, in its um, process of getting made in the production, it went through a lot of different hands, including, um, obviously, we talked about, uh, you know, Sylvester Sloan, Mickey Rourke, uh, at one point, uh, Martin Scorsese was offered to direct the film. Whoa. Yeah, uh, super That's weird. A different movie. Yeah. Uh, David Cronenberg uh, offered was also Jesus offered. Jesus Christ, that'd be a way different movie. Yeah, it's uh, fucking wild, dude. Um, <laughs> there was a. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Okay, so here, so Stallone has said that his uh, that his script for Beverly Hills would have looked like the opening scene from Saving Private Ryan on the beaches of Normandy. Believe it or not, the finale was him in a stolen Lamborghini playing chicken with an oncoming freight train being driven by an uh, ultra uh, slimy bad guy. How do you think you would win that? Like, (laughs) that, what? Yeah, bro, I don't know. Lamborghini playing chicken with a train. The Lamborghini loses that every time. What the fuck? Yeah, dude, it's uh, it's it was wild. There's like all sorts of shit. Like you hear about it, you're like, oh, uh, this is one of those things. Like, did you ever watch those uh, uh, the movies that made us uh, oh, I, series? I've seen, yeah, I've seen uh, almost all of them. I don't think I've seen like the, some of the newest stuff or all the newest season. So it's like when you go back and you look at some of those ones and you like realize how far, how much they changed from when they began to what we got. Oh yeah. It's, uh, one thing that pops to mind is like back to the future where the original time machine wasn't a DeLorean. It was what a refrigerator that was in a, uh, 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 you, uh, uh, 
junkyard. Yeah. A junkyard refrigerator. It's like, yeah, that would have been a really weird, different movie had they gone with that. Instead, they went with the DeLorean. Also, it would have been bad because kids wouldn't climb in refrigerators. And that was one fear that they had and why they switched it to a car. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It, like, you always, like hearing about where some of the some movies start and where they end is is a very interesting thing. I'm trying to think of any more, but I can't think of them off the top of my head right now. Oh, so Stallone was given the script. Uh, he he gave the script a dramatic rewrite. That's why it was so different. Because he wanted to put his touches on it. Which makes sense. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. He was going to kill uh, Rosewood. Damn. Halfway through the film. Who was called yeah. Sidens at that point for some reason. It's called what? Sidens. No, Sidens? Like, yeah, S-I-D-D-I-O-N-S. I don't know. That was his name apparently. Sidens? Sidens. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking. It was it's wild if you go and look at the development of that movie. But yeah, anywho, fun times, great oldies. Uh, what other trailers did uh, were sent this week? So we talked about if uh, American Society of Magical. No. no. <laughs> you you can say it, Joe. It's not a bad word. I don't care. Not saying it. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, I, it's Joseph. another one I haven't watched. And I, I have no idea what uh, what it's about. It's a it's an interesting premise. Um, it's not it's not what you think it is. Um, I don't know how to explain. Hold on, let me read the premise to you. It's once I find it again. <laughs> loading music, loading music, loading music. Oh, um, all right. So let's see here. The American Society of Magical Negroes. Uh, it's got a lot of dope ass people in it, um, which is uh pretty rad. Um, but so the premise is the film is a satire of the magical Negro trope. Uh, so obviously, um, protagonist Aaron. Um, is recruited into a magical society of African Americans to follow their lifelong cause to make the lives of white people easier. Yeah, so when you watch it, it makes more sense uh, than what the, the title is. Um, I highly recommend watching because it it's actually very funny. Uh, but it's uh, got a lot of like David Allen Greer's in it. Um, which is awesome because uh, I love that dude. But like, I don't know, it's got a lot of people, and you you recognize you probably won't know the name, so I'm not gonna go through all of them. But you're like, oh yeah, that person, that person, that person, Dave Allen Greer, he was in Blank Man. Um, that's a poll. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's just um, it's just, it's just a funny trailer. Uh, that I I found extremely hilarious. Uh, because of the premise of the movie itself and the trailer does a lot better job of emphasizing the humor is, is it a period piece it looks like it like a period piece type thing so it's set in modern times but oh, it is modern times. they tell okay. the story of how they're of the society it's because it's if i remember correctly in this it stated in the trailer it's one of the oldest um like societies in the country okay uh, but it's hidden away because of what their their goal is. You have to watch it because it makes, like I said, this the the premise, written premise, does not give you everything that the movie tra that the trailer does. And I saw this trailer a while ago, but I couldn't find it anywhere else. I saw it like on uh, it popped up on Instagram or something. I think Justice Smith posted about it. Or maybe it was on Twitter. I can't remember. And then I couldn't find the trailer anywhere to send it. And all of a sudden it popped up yesterday. And I was like, send. Um, let's see. If Beverly Hills 
Merry Little Batman. Yeah, Merry Little Batman, uh, Civil War. Oh, Civil War. That was the other one I was thinking of. Um, what did Which you watch did that watch trailer? The trailer for that one okay, as good. well. It looked cool. Um, it's just what alternate history America type thing. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I can't remember. There's who's in it. I mean, there's a lot of people in it. Uh, Kirsten Dunst, uh, which is wild because I was like, all right, where's she at? And I watched it twice and I was like, where is she? She's listed as one of the main. Oh, that's her. She looks rough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's older. So, I mean, obviously it's going to happen. But I was not ready for what what uh, what she looked like. Um, so they updated the premise uh, for... Um, the the movie itself uh if i could find it here <laughs> oh i didn't update it in here though well this this doesn't really this doesn't it, this encapsulates the whole thing the united states stands on the brink of civil war in a near future setting so that's definitely your uh your 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 one so the big names in it, uh, Kirsten Dunst, um, in this description are on Wikipedia. She's listed as as a reporter. Um, she's definitely a photojournalist by any by by what it looks like in the trailer because she's toting a camera around and taking pictures of people, and that's usually what a photojournalist does. But I digress. And then Nick Offerman, uh, who is a longtime friend and co uh, co contributor with Alex Garland. He was in that show Devs, uh, which, by the way, is one of the best TV shows ever to be made and not seen by anybody. Because um, Nick Offerman is great in anything yeah. he puts his mind to. Um, I want to say... I could have swore they gave a better... No, I don't yeah, want to watch... Seeing a good description of it anywhere does imdb have an updated one no it and then, was basically the same thing yeah the near future a team of journalists travel across the united states during a uh, rapidly escalating civil war that has engulfed the entire nation okay so from what i i gleaned from the trailer um there is a civil war going on there's something called the western front uh and then the rest of it and basically the Western Front, I'm going to guess, just by the name of it, is uh, the Western part of the United States has uh, basically enacted a uh, rebellion against the rest okay, of so the country. Screen Rant has a little bit of a better explanation here. So uh, starring Kristen Dunst, uh, Wagner, Mora, Jesse... Clemens and Nick Offerman as a tyrannical United States president. Civil War appears to be a fearless take on an extreme but potentially plausible form of American dystopia in which 19 states secede from the country. The Western forces led by the unlikely alliance of Texas and California, so that's how we, how we know it's already fiction, uh, have militarized under a new American flag with two stars as opposed to 50. There is also mention of a Florida alliance and a glimpse of several U.S. factions shown in the Civil War trailer, which include Washington, Montana, Georgia, Louisiana, and Minnesota, as some of the other states that seceded. Uh, yeah, so as the time of writing, the only information available about the plot of Alex Garland's Civil War is presented in the first trailer, released on December 13th. The reasoning behind the seemingly bizarre alliance of Texas and California in the film points to the notion that the war isn't over Democrat and Republican politics, but more about Offerman's corrupt three-term presidency. The United States federal government has apparently disavowed its allegiance to the United States Constitution and is now held under the budding dictatorship of Offerman's tyrannical president. Uh, continues on to say in order for a state to legally secede from the United from the US it would need the approval of 34 other states including that uh, California and Texas likely seceded illegally in Garland Civil War 
At first glance, it appears that the Western forces are fighting against the rise of a totalitarian government under Offerman's presidency rather than over any differences in political ideology. The Western forces could also be uniting and fighting over a water shortage crisis, or the conflict could have something to do with capitalism, tax rates, and uh, the tech sector. Most of the major tech companies in the U.S., such as Google, Amazon, and Tesla, are in the fictionally seceded states such as California, Texas, and Washington. Uh, it goes on from there more, but it seems to be more of a breakdown of the the trailer. But that's this that's the idea that they get from it. Okay, I mean that's that's so, a pretty good. Yeah, so it definitely helps with the idea. Of, more that this isn't going to be just like a straight up political like left right left right thing left versus right thing this is more of a oh someone's literally trying to subvert the united states type thing okay i mean it looked like a an interesting action movie to begin with so i'll probably end up watching it sometime in the future oh i'm definitely gonna be watching it Alex Garland, bro. Well, yeah, it's Alex Garland. But I'm just saying, like, is this? It's going to theaters. So, is this a movie that I'm going to watch in theaters? Eh, probably not. I, we haven't really gone to a movie uh, in theaters in a long time. But once it's streaming, yeah, I could definitely see watching that. Well, I want to see it in theaters, but that's just me. Well, I mean, if we go, we go. Yeah, damn right we go. Damn we right we go. To theaters in a long time. Yeah, life is. Isn't been... that weird to think that we slowly haven't gone to a movie in a theater in a while? We used to go like almost every month, if not every week, if not every week, and then it slowly just became like every month, and then every couple months, and now I don't remember the last time we saw a movie in theaters. Like I know we've seen one in the past year, but I just don't remember what it was. Yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a, a weird little uh, delve into not much blame COVID uh, it is COVID's fault for the most part yeah mm -hmm. uh, other movie trailers that you sent to us The Wanted Man from Dolph Lundgren I said that for Mike only it looks terrible I mean but it is Dolph Lundgren did I send the Bricklayer trailer I don't think I did I haven't seen that yet I see Dune Part 2 oh, yeah. trailer which I haven't watched yet <sighs> um, no I don't don't see the bricklayer. I'm going pretty far back right now. Okay, I don't know if I send it or not. I, I watch it. Uh, looks fucking terrible, so I didn't send it. I don't think. I'm all the way out to last week where I posted a picture of the cranberry sprite, <laughs> which wasn't bad. Not great. I'm not saying that it's that you know. Ooh, go out and buy it. It's it's you know something to try. It didn't even really have much of a cranberry flavor to me, but it wasn't bad. What you know? I know it sounds fucking stupid, uh, but you know what really bothers me about it is the fact that it's not pink. It's still clear. Yeah. And I was like, like they could have done a little bit more to be because even the label looks looks festive. They call it. Uh, it's not even just called like cranberry sprite. It's called like uh, winter spiced cranberry. Yeah. Let's see if I can pull the image up. And you would think, right oh, okay, it's gonna have. Oh, no, I nailed it. Winter Spiced Cranberry. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, it's going to taste like, you know, like a, a, a like spicy cranberry drink. Like yeah. cranberry, you know. Nah. Nah, it, it, has a, it has a bit of a cranberry flavor to it, and that's about it. But, yeah, if they would have maybe, like, dyed it red or something like that, made it a little bit more cranberry-ish. Yeah, no. Yeah, I was like, all right, well. I think I tried it last year, and I don't think I enjoyed it. So I was like, I'm good. something just to try. Yeah. Let's see. What else was there? I thought there was one more thing that I rolled over. Oh, Kung Fu Panda 4. Yeah. Yeah, I, I forgot I sent that one, too. I started watching that. That's another trailer that popped up on uh, YouTube. I started watching it, and I was just like, eh, I'm not interested enough in this to, to continue watching the trailer. Yeah, it, I was like, all right, well, I didn't enjoy the third movie, so uh, I don't think I'll really be too worried I saw about the third it. Movie. Yeah, I don't 
think I saw the third movie. I'm not even sure if I saw the second movie. No, I have. I just don't remember it. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. But I think that was it for trailers that we saw. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only other thing I had for this week, because like you said at the beginning, there really wasn't a whole lot. Nope. Uh, Zack Snyder apparently wants to go back and refinish, uh, redo an ending of a film. Do you know what film it is? One of his films? Yeah, one oh. of his films. I was like, the opportunity for him to redo a, a film. Oh, uh, is it Sucker Punch? Yes, it is Sucker Punch. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh, he's in talks right now, from what uh, the, this article from NME says, uh, with the, the main cast, hoping to, to get them all back and do reshoots uh, for the ending. Uh, apparently he, let's see, where does it say? Uh... Yep. There it is. Yeah, I'm looking for uh, exactly what his if there was an exact quote on why he wanted to go back and, s- and redo it. Because it was left wide open and didn't tell you what happened with anybody. Well, there was that, and like he had, uh, God, I know I went through this and I just can't find it right now. But basically, the it, it was the idea that like, he just didn't think it was finished. Like it didn't. It's one of those movies where it, it feels like one of those movies where. Like a like a painter never feels like they finished with with the a painting that he just doesn't feel like the ending was good enough, and so he wanted to go back and redo the ending. So he's in talks with Warner Brothers right now, uh, and also the the main cast hoping to be able to get them all back so that he could do uh, reshoots of the ending to be able to uh, more broadly tell what the, the story that he wanted to to tell was. Interesting. Um, yeah, okay, so here. So I'm working with Warner Brothers to try and find a window to go back in. Even though we did an extended version, it's not the fully realized movie, is what he said. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could give me a sequel. I'd be fine with it. I mean, I'd be fine with the sequel as well. Also would like to see what he thinks the ending should be for this movie. It's true, because that shit was... That whole movie was wild as fuck. Yeah, despite these uh, those additions, Snyder recently admitted that he's still not satisfied with the cut, saying that it's not a fully realized movie. It's funny the way he talks about this movie. Like, I think we understood this movie as well as what he was aiming for. Yeah. But uh, that audience is just didn't really get it. That's because most audiences are fucking stupid. Because uh, in, in this article, he's quoted as saying, Sucker Punch is probably the most obvious example of a straightforward, pure satire that I've made. And I still think it I didn't go far enough because a lot of people thought it was that it was just a movie about scantily clad girls dancing around in a brothel. I'm like, really? Did you see Watchmen? That film is completely superhero deconstruction from the drop which is all Alan Moore. That's the thing I found really interesting and motivating throughout my career. And I think that seen as a, as a whole, it's more obvious than a movie to movie, than on a movie to movie basis. So yeah, like it's satire. It's, it's an interesting way of telling a story and people just didn't understand it as it was just mostly, you know, Oh, it's scantily clad women, blah, blah. Yeah, that's what that's what's wrong with people, um, and and the fact that we listen to other people who we shouldn't listen to. Mm-hmm. Just because even pointing out Watchmen, yeah, you can take Watchmen at the face at face value, but when you actually think about it, it's more of a deeper movie about superheroes and how they would you know might be in in the real world and whatnot. Even even the boys takes that to a, an extreme approach. Yeah, you know what would what could real superheroes look like you know well they have all this power they could be just total dicks yeah what's that quote uh 
power corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely corrupts absolutely yeah. yeah so i mean that just makes you right you know just when you when you become untouchable then you know that's what happens and yeah i don't know i i've always i always hated the fact that people shit on sucker punch because they're like oh it's just this weird male fantasy i'm like Whose not. male fantasy has a bunch of underage girls being prostituted? Oh, okay, some weird people. I yeah, well, those are, people but... aren't aren't allowed in your schools or churches, so. No, they're not. But you know, it it is just the fact of like what you're seeing as these action action sequences are really taking place in the the headspace of you know somebody in a mental institution. Like it is that like you really you don't have to think about it because it's literally telling you what's going on, but. But yet, some people just have a hard understanding, you know, with it. I don't know. Yeah, well, those people are stupid and should shut their dumb fucking mouths. Wow. Yeah. yeah as a society, we should be able to open hand slap dumb people like that. It would be. It would make things easier. It would make people shut their fucking mouths. Mm-hmm. But oh, I'm. If I say this, I wonder if I'm going to get slapped. If you have to think that thought, don't say it. Get on get on whatever platform that nobody's on, like on your Facebook, and put it on there because nobody cares what those people say or think. Uh, unfortunately, I think people do care about what those people say and think. That's why there's a proliferation of that shit. Well, those people should be slapped too. But I don't know. I'm not on social media, so. You shouldn't be. It's very freeing. My social media is boiled down to basically just news articles now, anyways. Which is good. That's all it needs to be. The rest of these fucking things can go away. I don't give two shits about who's pregnant. Right. Who's dating who. I don't give a fuck. Who's making what movie. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's all I basically had for this week. (laughs) Ha ha. Um, okay, yeah. No, I ain't got nothing else either. Yeah. Um, E3's dead and gone. That was the yeah, only other I thing I saw. That. There's nothing really to talk about other than just good. Well, it's one of those things that's a little sad because I never got a chance to go to E3. I know you did at least once, right? I've been a couple times, yeah. have been a couple times, and, and part of those was on uh, Company Dime. Hell yeah, dog. As well, so. Actually, I've never, think... I've never paid for E3, ever, ever. Yeah, uh, I think that... You probably went during the best of times for it. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. Because it really was, at the time, all the big companies coming together, doing all the stuff in-house, in-house meaning at E3. You got to see all the stuff, and then you got to see all the little stuff, and then all the the little, uh, the, the more indie developer creators all, all around as well, and then uh, all the weird stuff that they used to do at E3, stuff that you can't really get away with nowadays, you know? But at least you got to see all that stuff. So I lament that I wish I would have been able to to, to at least go to E3 once and see the weirdness and craziness of it uh, back in the day, like you did. But yeah, the, what it's become had become more recently, which is, you know, I think Nintendo was probably one of the first ones to break off and do their own uh, conference thing, and then yeah. what Sony followed, and then Xbox followed behind that, something like that, yeah. And, and so now what's the point of E3 if, if your big three are going to have their own conferences? You know, yeah, you could still showcase smaller indie creators and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm sure even Sega and, and other other companies might be there. But uh, when you lose that big of money, you know, that much money into it, yeah, I can see that you're not going to survive very much longer. The problem with it became the fact it went from an industry thing to a fandom thing and the fandom is the most toxic thing you can possibly have yeah that's a good point so that's what made it go down to me that's what actually like the last year that I went was Mm -hmm. one of the first um, one where they allowed the public in like Mm -hmm. fully and it was one of the worst uh, because these people are terrible yeah, uh, it becomes more like a Comic Con or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and they, it it went away from showcasing stuff to more of just trying to sell shit. Mm-hmm. And like sell when I say sell shit, obviously it was there to sell stuff like right, like to hey help me publish this video game. But it became it like every booth became like a sales floor 
of like, hey, look at this laptop, look at this monitor, look at this peripheral of whatever sort of, hey, come look at v- VR porn. Yeah. And it's like, bro, this isn't E3. Like, E3 was dope because it was industry stuff, and it was like, hey, this is what we're working on. Look how dope this is. Yeah. And it was then it was like, it just devolved into like this, it very much so a, a Comic-Con uh, vibe, and it just wasn't the same. Like, Comic-Con is, is all capitalism. Which don't be wrong. I'm not gonna saying I don't like couples. I'm like fucking. That's my job. No, uh, you're not saying you don't like Comic Con either, because obviously I think both of us would really love to go back to San Diego Comic Con. Uh, it'd be really fun to do. It's a fun experience, but it's not the experience that you, you originally had at E3, and that you're lamenting that you're missing from E3. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't be wrong. I do enjoy the fact that when Mafia Three was coming out, they fed us uh, fried gator bits and gumbo. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was pretty fun. And the fact they had a full-on funeral procession with a live band carrying a coffin through the lobby, mm-hmm. uh, that was pretty dope. But it's like the little things, like they get overshadowed. Like there's, uh, I think it was the last time we were there, um, and there was a, you know, you can go and experience games. You can go play games for everybody else. And there was like this four and a half hour long line to play uh, a new map of Destiny. And I was like, why? Yeah, at that point, it's no longer about showcasing to people that might review it or might, you know, buy into it, I guess. And yeah, yeah it's more of just a a fan thing that's yeah. just awful. And I was I'm like, this is, for, this is... I'm this... not standing in line for four hours to, to play a new map of Destiny. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this is fucking horseshit, dude. Like, what the hell? Because um, I want to say the last... E3, what year was that? Was that 2019 that I went to? Uh, it had to have been earlier than that, I think. 2018? I can't remember. Yeah. No, because 2018 you were you were working for Microsoft, weren't you? 2019 I was working for Microsoft, too, up until the end of the year. So right. wouldn't it be... Did you go during for Microsoft? I know you went when yeah. you worked it. I went, okay. I went with Microsoft and I went with Best Buy. Okay. I have to look it up. But mm-hmm. like the last good year was when we went to the Bethesda um, party, and that shit was like hard to get into because you had to like go get a ticket at one point uh, that allows you to go in, but there was like a limited number, so it wasn't like you just line up and get in. It's like they stopped handing out tickets at a certain time, um, but you had like no someone to be able to get into those lines to get the ticket. Um, but yeah, we got in. That was f- fun because like they showed off. Um, what even what, was that? The year they released Fallout Four. I don't remember what yeah. all there. I think I know they showed off the new Doom. So whatever year that was, like the Doom twenty sixteen. Yeah. So twenty sixteen. It might have been. Might have been 2015? 2015, 2016? Yeah. I can't remember now. I, I have to go and look at my, my timeline if, history. If, if they were showing off the new Doom, then it would have been like 2015, 2016, because that's what... Yeah. When, yeah, they refer, refer to the new Doom as 2016, Doom 2016. Yeah, because it was... I mean, it was public at that point. So Because we saw some other stuff that wasn't public uh, at the point. Like, we've seen... Well, I guess I could say this now, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we saw a version of Halo Infinite that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think ever will exist because Microsoft doesn't have the balls to do it. But, um, yeah, and it's it's wild. But, yeah, I, I E3 just devolved into just a hellscape of not good anything. It just went away from what it was. Much like anything in the video game world just gets fucking ruined. Um, like the newest uh, game awards was just a tra- a train wreck of trash can fires. Um, I didn't even watch it. I, the only thing I saw of it was Christopher Judge. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he was accepting an award or or giving an award, but his quote of just uh, of uh, my speech last year was longer than the the Call of Duty single player campaign. Yeah fucking hilarious to me i i love christopher judge so much uh from way back in the stargate days 
uh, to see like people just bitching at him online about that quote as being like, I think people were saying it's unprofessional and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yo, you need to grow a sense of humor because that shit was hilarious to me. Yeah, and factual because yeah. this year's factual, Modern Warfare. Like, what are you like? What are you? What are you defending here? You're defending Call of Duty, a multinational cash grab of a of a gaming, uh, uh, well, of a game in general. And Activision isn't your friend at all, or Blizzard Activision definitely isn't your friend. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, I that's the only part I caught of it. I was like, that's fucking hilarious. I, I love it that he that he said that. That's the only thing I've watched. Then I saw some of the the winners too. I think. Uh, just because I was wondering uh, if Alan Wake 2 had won any awards. One for, like, best writing and also one other award. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, the most hor- horseshit award went to uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, and what was that for? I saw them win something. I don't best know ongoing was. game. Best ongoing game. Which I is mean, horseshit. It's, I, I get it, yeah. It's not, te- it's not a Destiny. Like, that would be an ongoing game. And I'm not even saying Destiny should win. Uh, Fortnite no, should I'm not win. Saying de- but yeah, I'm not saying Destiny should win either. Like, but you're right. Like Fortnite is obviously a, a wider, wider played game. Probably even has more updates than Destiny with all the different seasons and stuff that they do. So yeah, it could have been a, a definite contender in uh, in that category. And my problem with the fact calling or giving that to Cyberpunk is the only reason Cyberpunk is an ongoing game is because they're still trying to fix it. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And it's not even the fact that, like, it's because it's not a live service game, right? It doesn't, no, it's it, not. It's, like, that's saying Skyrim is an ongoing game just because there's right, people just playing it. People are modding it and playing it, too. Yeah, yeah, like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, Cyberpunk 2077 shouldn't have won that award it shouldn't have been nominated for that award because no. the only reason it's an ongoing is because people want it to be a good game and CG Project Red wants it to be a good game so they keep trying to fix it look I will defend and say that it is a good game to it me. is a good game but it's not an ongoing game but it's not an ongoing game definitely not uh, and it should have uh, I don't even know what the categories are I'm actually I, I'm looking at it right now um, it should have been more of like DLC based, like, you know, best DLC, Cyberpunk, you know, because that's technically, it, it is technically a DLC. What is this organization system here? Bro, it's it's terrible, I'm telling you. It's it's one of the worst fucking things. Oh, so wait, okay, so this is Game of the Year went to Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, <laughs> I like how other Game of the Year's Resident Evil 4, a remake, like, why and that's uh, the thing about the game awards is there's not enough new games every year to fill categories and also like most of them are not played by enough people and like there's not enough like they should be I think someone said it I don't remember who it was they're like we should be celebrating the games not trying to pit them against each other and I'm like yes because award shows are garbage in general Versus just coming out saying, hey, like every year someone's like, oh, games, game of the year, game of the year, right? But it's like, I don't want to play Baldur's Gate 3 because I don't like traditional RPGs. So I would never vote for art for Baldur's Gate 3 to be game of the year. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's not my style of game. So I won't, I don't agree with that. Because my game of the year list would be vastly different than everybody else's. Might also oh, be definitely. probably a lot shorter. Yeah. Um, mainly because I don't even remember what games I did and didn't play this year. Um, but it's like, it's one of those things where like, you're trying to tell people like, and we have this talk about award stuff all the time, Oscars and Grammys and fucking shit. Mm-hmm. If you don't like something, you're not going to care if it wins an award. Like I don't go, like I'm not one of those people who like every year and goes watches all the best Oscar or best films, Oscar nominees before the award show comes out. Because most of those movies I don't give two shits about because they don't find them entertaining. Mm-hmm. Like Killers of the Flower Moon, I can give two shits about. Right. And not because I don't like anybody in it. I like Leo. I like Martin Scorsese when he shuts his fucking mouth and doesn't start rambling about shit he doesn't get involved in. But it's in. just not your movie. It's, an art, it's like an art house movie. You're yeah, and like, it's like it doesn't look it entertaining to me. Like I don't want to go – I don't want to be depressed. Exactly. 
You know, if I want to be depressed, I'm going to watch fucking Forrest Gump or some shit like that, where the majority of it makes me happy, but then there's the sad parts, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, watch Oliver and Company and skip the first five minutes, uh, that sort of thing. All dogs go to heaven. Skip, like, You're a monster, a all right? I said skip a large chunk of it. Yeah, like all of it? What's fucking wrong with you, you Joe? To, you have to let me finish. Um, but it's like when you get to these and there's like you're pitting them against each other but also like you're pitting like the dumbest things like you said the remake of Resident Evil 4 it's like that shouldn't be nominated for anything unless there's a category for remakes here's a weird category innovation in accessibility recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features technology and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience it's funny that they mention hardware because none of these things are hardware. Uh, the can, the nominees were Diablo 4, Forza Motorsport, Hi-Fi Rush, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Mortal Kombat 1, and Street Fighter 6. And they Forza probably don't Motorsport explain why. One. Yeah, it it doesn't actually say why. So in those so the reason why those games are nominated for that is because in their coding they were built to use accessibility controllers like the 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 adaptive controllers from both Xbox and now PlayStation, but they also have the ability to because before Xbox or Microsoft and PlayStation released theirs, there's been tie-ins to use uh, already assisted controls in those games. So the developers wrote into it the ability to use accessibility functions like a power wheelchair controls to be able to play the video game because that's how they've been done. Microsoft, a bunch of years ago, uh, released the adaptive controller and interface, which it has a name I can't remember right now, and yeah. I should because my my friend Solomon works for that, for that division and works on that project. Uh, but then the PlayStation just came out with theirs, and they have the ability to tie into a lot of those already existing hardware but with a game controller and the fact that you could, that game controller can be programmed to play almost any game versus these games are specifically made to utilize that technology that's already there. But do they explain that? No, because the game awards are fucking trash. No, they don't even explain that here. Like, I can I can glean that knowledge from here because I, I am aware of the Xbox controller and that uh, PlayStation is coming out with one themselves but had i not known that i wouldn't have known what this what this is plus to me it says software and or hardware so you would think that they would maybe recognize some piece of hardware but they don't and the other fact is those games are listed and i don't know how many of those games use it but there's one specific large version of software that is developed that's not even mentioned in that that are probably tied to at least I know the Forza one, um, and probably, well, actually, maybe, maybe more of them, but I know for the fact, I can't remember the name of it, I'd have to look it up, uh, but there's a specific software company, that's what they do. They go through and they make software to function for things like this. They have one that works, works for home media, uh, things like DVD players and set-top boxes, and it's a plug-in device that plugs in allows uh, the use of uh, these controllers, like for like IR purposes and, a- and and RF, so someone with disabilities can function through menus. And it's a piece of hardware, but also software is tied into things like video games. But the hardware part of it, it allows you to plug it in and it utilizes Ethernet ports and IR sensors to tie into fi- to disability hardware that's on wheelchairs and other things like that including uh speech recognition and that thing that's that uh stephen hawkins used the eyeball thingy see that's cool like why aren't we why why isn't that there like why isn't it just thank why you is it just games because the video game awards are trash and I'm, I'm still going through the rest of them some of these uh these awards are pretty weird games for impact for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. That 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 was a, a category. Uh T'Chaya is what won that. It looked like it looks like all just indie games there. Um uh, 
best ongoing, best community support. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's that shit. That's a category. Toxic as fuck, if you ask me. Um. Okay, your best independent game. That makes sense. Yep. Best debut in an indie game. Kind of makes sense. Best mobile game. All right. I guess, yeah, that makes sense too. Which, that category, if you read some of those, makes no sense because they're not all mobile games. They're just games you can play mobily. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so it's Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, which I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure it is what, just a remake of Final Fantasy VII? It's, uh, yeah, it's one of the many. So I guess Hello Kitty Island Adventure might be. I don't know much about that game. The winner was Honkai Star Rail. I, I don't really know much about that, but Monster Hunter Now and Terra Nil. All right. I don't know much about those. most of those games to really say what they are. Uh, best VR AR games, which went to Resident Evil Village VR mode. VR mode. Yeah. Not even game. Mode. Mode. That's what, yeah, it literally says Resident Evil Village VR mode. Because, again, it was its own game that's been out for a while, but they make a VR mode for it. It's like, I get it. It's probably really cool, but maybe showcase some games that are meant for VR only. Not just that. If I'm not mistaken, it's not even the full game. It's literally a section of the game. It probably is. Like uh, other ones listed on here, Gran Turismo Seven, Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is a VR game, if I recall right. Which, yeah, you can play the game in VR. Yeah. Uh, Humanity and Synapse. Uh, I don't really know about anything about those ones. Uh, best action game makes sense. Best act. Wait, but what was that? Best action game slash adventure. So you have best action game, and then you have best action adventure. Yeah. Which again, Resident Evil 4 is on this list. So it's like it's an old game, guys. It's been out for a long time. Pick something else. <laughs> game uh, Awards happen every year, and yet there's games that came out literally when Resident Evil 4 wasn't that on the GameCube? Yeah. So like over a decade ago? Yeah. Actually, wait, shit, that's like Damn near twenty years ago. A Fucking. lot of these, at least the categories, make sense. I'm still just scrolling through the rest of them. I don't know how many. Best sports and racing, best multiplayer. Baldur's Gate three won best multiplayer. All right, which is funny because Fortnite's not even on the multiplayer one. I mean, it's by far one of the best multiplayer games ever to exist. Yeah. This is the one that got me. Best Adaptation. Recognizing outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment medium. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, it sounds backwards. Because, yeah, Best Adaptation, I saw uh, uh, on another website just list that The Last of Us won, and I was like, that's not an adaptation, though. Yeah, the, okay. it's so it should be adaptive work. Yeah. Yeah, because it was like the Mario Brothers movie was in it. Uh, the, Gran Turismo, yeah. Castlevania Nocturne, and also Twisted Metal. And the thing about that is, one of those things you just mentioned isn't technically an adaptation. Ooh, let me think. Uh, probably Castlevania Nocturne. No, because uh, Nocturne is based on uh, the video game, but it's Gran no, Turismo. But I mean, like, like, there is no Castlevania Nocturne yeah. game, is what I'm saying. It's a storyline uh, from one of the games. It's a storyline from one of the games, so that's why I would say it's probably not a, a direct adaptation. But Gran or, Turismo is not an adaptation. It's not, actually, yeah. Gran Turismo is, a, is the true life story of someone who played the video game and won a tournament that was based on Gran Turismo. The that's movie right. has nothing to do with Gran Turismo because Gran Turismo doesn't have a story. That's Gran right. Turismo is literally a racing simulator. Yeah. So you're right. Like, it is absolutely not even an adaptation. adaptation. Yeah. That's cool. Trash. Uh, most anticipated game. There's, there's a weird... Like, how do you even judge that? Uh, I mean, if you go by that and you, if you were to go and you statistically looking at it, the day, bef or the day before, is that what it's called? That shit... Oh, my God. That Dude, fucking no, scam not, game? We could, hold, we could do a whole 
podcast on that. But that was the number one wish listed game on Steam for like the longest time, like pre ordered wise. And yeah. it, I mean, yeah, there's details that we can go for on forever for it, but like that one, I don't even know if it was on the list, but like that one statistically should have been on that list, but I think it wasn't put on there because they realized it was a scam. Yeah. And that in camp, in camp, like basically, like literally, like personifies what's wrong with the game the gaming awards Mm -hmm. because like that technically should have been on there and you guys should have do it but like oh no it's you know it's too much controversy to be honest we're not gonna put it on there i'm like but you're gonna put a game that's 15 years old on there oh we're not even done i didn't realize there was content creator of the year yeah i mean this that doesn't make sense to me for video games hey here's a guy using someone else's hard work to entertain people online, but he's going to get some kind of award and, and like, well, I don't even think that it, the, the problem with that too, is like, they don't just do video games. They do other stuff as well. So it's not even like anything that just does video games. I don't know. Uh, best esports game, best esports athlete. Now we're really getting like, athlete. Why? Why is that an award? Best esports team. Like, best esports coach. Yeah, okay, we're really starting to... Yeah, that was it. The best esports event actually has... All right, I'm done. I mean, literally, <laughs> I'm done because that was the last thing. But best esports event? Like, how do you give an award to best esports event? Don't worry, somehow they're going to find a way to do best uh, video game awards... Uh show and give it to themselves i'm done yeah right i'm done yeah it's fantastic yeah anywho uh that's it for this week's episode of comes naturally we have been joe i have been cody as usual you fuckers just came naturally bye bye